Welcome to Swayam online platform. Today's MOOC course is on urban local governance. And today's video, we are discussing an interesting topic, which is on police of city. You might wonder why police of city? Because this topic is an important aspect as far as the city is concerned. Since we are discussing on urban local governance, it is also important to understand who is maintaining the law and order of the city. We discussed about the district collector, we discussed about different people who are protecting the community of a city. So I thought it was necessary to discuss on the police of a city because police are unsung heroes of the city. And we will know at the end of this video why the police is called the unsung hero of the city. Today we'll discuss in our video on why policing is important and policing in cities like global aspect of the city and then policing in India, urban and local police, a comparison. We are going to study the urban police and also the rural police. So today's content we will be discussing on what is policing, policing in city in a global aspect, policing in India, urban and rural police a comparison, organization and structure of police, challenges of policing in city, police and urbanization. And also we will conclude out of our study what policing is actually contributing to a city. Policing in city global aspect. When we look at the global level, we need to discuss few of the police around the globe. New York Police Department, famously called the NYPD, London Metropolitan Police Service. We also have the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department. Then you have the Singapore Police Force and the Amsterdam Police, the Stockholm Police. These are some of the popular police at the global level. Now we look at NYPD, New York Police Department. There are over 36,000 officers and the budget is over $10 billion. Countering terrorism is one of the power and also one of the priority as far as the NYPD is concerned. Community policing techniques are usually used because they use some call like a spy or espionage system to understand whether the people or the community is safe. If you see in Chennai, we have friends of police. It's something similar to that. They have community policing so that they can help maintain law and order of the city. They are a specialized unit especially for maintaining law and order in the city of New York. After the attack of 9-11, it was understood that they have to enhance their capabilities and also train themselves more efficiently because they are facing terrorism and to, to counter terrorism, it is important to increase by training uh, practices to increase uh, resources and also become more efficient. So community policing became an important aspect and also apart from that more vigilance systems, security surveillance system, training methods and practices was introduced. The 9-11 attack was a shocker because right under their nose they were attacked by terrorists and they were not able to counter and it was important that they understand how to counter it with the help of the community to understand the community. So they also have an emergency service unit, a bomb squad, an aviation unit and a harbor unit to protect the needs of the community. If you take London Metropolitan Police Service, you have around 30,000 officers, staff and volunteers 
and they are global leaders in countering terrorism. They are very efficient and vigilant with the latest technology. The London Bridge attack in 2017 and Salisbury nerve agent attack in 2018 was an eye opener and that made them increase their efficiency in countering terrorism and also countering such attacks. First, police force to use fingerprints to identify criminals and also they play a very important role in modern policing system because they have such very good radio system and also signal uh, could draw them attention from any attackers. Now we need to understand what is urban police and rural police. The difference and the distinguishing the urban police and rural police will help us understand why urban police is more important and it is significant and also more stressful compared to the rural police. Policing is an important aspect we know that it is in order to maintain law and order of that particular area. Here we are discussing about urban police and this differentiating it from the rural police. Now we will take few parameters like population density, jurisdiction and other factors. Let us go through one by one to understand how each police is different from the other. Now if you take population density, if you see uh, the population density as far as the urban police is concerned is high. As far as rural uh, policing is concerned is low. The population density what I intend to say is the population in that one particular area. So if you see urban cities are quite crowded as far as the rural areas is concerned is not that crowded where they have to really manage and be more vigilant. As far as jurisdiction is concerned we have municipal corporation metropolitan police or the state police whereas the rural police has just the district police to look up to and if you see the nature of crimes in urban areas where the police has to handle now in urban areas you see high incidence of organized crimes there is mafias there is cyber crimes there is uh, also white collar crimes and street crimes so if you see the variety of crimes is plenty. There is also smuggling of drugs, drugs peddling. So there are many issues to counter. It is just not few of the issues but many issues that erupt due to mismanagement. So it is essential that the urban police has to be very vigilant and very practical and at the same time very watchful high incidence of crime because it happens to be a very crowded and uh, it is uh, possible to uh, hoodwink police easily but it is difficult if we have good efficient system if we have the surveillance system the camera system which has been introduced in many of the cities so that we can watch the crime and catch the criminals and also have evidences for crime. If you see in the rural areas high incidence of property crimes are there and crimes against women is possible. So here I wouldn't say that the urban police do not have the stress of uh, protecting the civilians but they have. But the nature of the crime is always high and the intensity is high. Whereas in rural police there is some kind of control system. You can be very watchful and also try and advocate certain practices so that you can have the crowd under control. Now if you see the last point is on head of police. Uh, here you have under uh, urban police you have commissioner or additional commissioner. Whereas in the rural police you have the SP or the DSP. Okay, so that is the superintendent of police or the deputy superintendent of police. So again uh, you see higher cadre is usually deputed for urban policing and lower cadre for rural policing because of the nature of the crime and also for the population. Now if you take a 
public perception. The public perception as far as urban policing is concerned, it's influenced by media and political factors. Strong political hold and also strong media influence. So urban police is hands are tied because they cannot do much because there is pressure from politics, there is pressure from media, there is pressure from the community also. So they have to be very careful in every move. As far as the rural policing is concerned, the public trust in police is higher here. And the administration process, as far as the urban police is concerned, it is centralized and streamlined. Whereas in rural police, it is decentralized and less streamlined. And the nature of the decentralization is because of the gravity of the situation being very less and the gravity is higher as far as the urban policing is concerned. What are the policing strategies as far as the urban police is concerned? You have preventive policing and intelligence gathering. Preventive policing is you have intelligence around the city to find out what the situation is and to also have feelers, you know, to see whether there is going to be any incidents of crime anywhere. And this will give way to protect its civilians. Whereas in rural policing, they are not very careful because it's very predictive and because the crowd is manageable, it is highly reactive and patrolling type. So you can see the difference is urban policing has to be more vigilant and more uh, intelligent dependence because they have to get informants to inform what is the nature of that particular city, what is the situation in that particular city. Whereas uh, the rural police, it is highly reactive uh, because you can predict the nature of the rural areas and also you know the pros and cons of a rural area and it handling the rural police is much easier for the rural police than the urban police. What are the special units? Special units for handling specific crimes and situation whereas the rural police have limited specialized units. That is also a disadvantage because you can see that the specialized units are not much and people take advantage of that situation. If there are specialized units, then counter reaction and immediate and instant reaction can be there. But the police stations itself is quite far away in rural areas, whereas in urban policing, you see that the urban police stations are quite nearby and very approachable because of the nature of the situation and the nature of the crime rates increasing. It is evident that you should have more police stations. Organization structure of the urban police in India. Now, if you want to understand the urbanization structure, we have something called a commissionerate system. The dual command system, the specialized unit a system and also the community policing and central law enforcement agencies. So these are the categories we find in urban city police. Why? We have because it is the need of the hour, because of the population and the need of that particular city. So if you see, you have the commissionerate system, the dual command system, the specialized units, the community policing, central law enforcement agencies. What is the commissionerate system? Commissionerate system is nothing but when you see that police force is really need to be enhanced, then you have in a very populated city more policing system and usually cities or which are metropolitan or cosmopolitan will have a commissionerate system because they need proper law and enforcement agencies. Now if you take for example the Greater Chennai Police uh, which follows the commissionerate system was established in the year 1659 and its motto was truth alone triumphs. It's headed by a commissioner of police and its administrative control is under the Tamil Nadu Home Department. 
It has four subdivisions of the Greater Chennai Police and the police stations under the Greater four subdivisions are 104 police stations. So if you see four subdivisions of the Greater Chennai Police has 104 police station coming under them. They have gazetted officers and not gazetted officers. Now the ranks of the law enforcement in Chennai Police if you take you have the DGP or the Director General of Police. Then you have the additional Director General of Police below which is the Inspector General of Police. Then you have the Deputy Inspector General of Police, all gazetted officers. The Senior Superintendent of Police followed by the Superintendent of Police. Then you have the additional Superintendent of Police then the deputy superintendent of police and then finally the assistant superintendent of police followed by the police constables. So if you see the structure and the ranks of the law enforcement in Chennai police is long because it needs enforcement, it needs the special units. So the director general of police will be heading the commissionate system. Then you have additional or an assistant director general of police to support if need arises but usually there is an additional director general of police. Of course there is an IG or the inspector general of police and the deputy inspector general of police to support again the director general of police and followed by the rest of the senior superintendent of police, superintendent of police, additional superintendent of police, deputy superintendent of police and the assistant superintendent of police. We can now discuss what are the challenges of policing in city. It is not few but many. First challenge is the population. Overpopulation is a concern as far as the policing is concerned because the number of police deputed will be much less than the population concern because if you see in a city it is not only the number of existing population but also it involves a lot of migrants could be from the unorganized sketch sector and these people come from various places without proper social security cards or id cards rather we would name that they might not even have an Aadhaar card. So it is necessary that we need to estimate the number of the population. So the first challenge itself is the population. So if they call for say a strike, the expected number of people for the strike can be numerable. So preparation is very important as far as the policing is concerned. And then there is lack of infrastructure. Lack of infrastructure in the case of connectivity or the facility for immediate protection of its citizen. So we have the basic facility but strong facilities like good transportation system, good uh, communication system, good enforcement agencies will help or having trained or well equipped systems. The equipment has to work at the right time. So it is a big challenge and limited resources. Sometimes training is not good enough or the equipment is not updated that it will not be helping at the right time. So it is important that all the equipment has to be practiced and also well maintained so that it can be used for future. Of course the major challenge faced by the police is the corruption. We cannot say that the police are corrupted or the civilians are corrupted. It will be a blame game or we can say the politicians are corrupt, the people involved are corrupt. If you see uh, when you talk about corruption, it's a whole cycle. Now when you're talking about corruption, you can't say that uh, the people below the ranks uh, can be corrupt and people above the ranks cannot be corrupt. Corruption is a disease and has to be eradicated at any level and it is important to understand that corruption is a crime and although the government has taken measures to free the 
community from uh, any forms of corruption it has become essential or practice or a habit as far as corruption is concerned so either the police are tempted or police are not tempted but still uh, they have the practice of uh, thinking that police is doing a favor for the community so it is the obligation of the community to give a bribe to the police so both ways it's criminal it is a crime and so corruption at any level either by the police or by the community has to be stopped so there is some kind of realization because corruption does not happen just overnight you can see that because of lack of uh, equipment or facility if it is very hot there should be proper protection for the police they can actually make use of uh, certain facilities easily without uh, waiting for a long time or it is at their own risk that they have to make use of the available resources which is limited and it's not efficient then the tendency to go for corruption happens so we have seen that uh, increasing the facilities now if you see the best police which we had discussed like the new york police or the stockholm police or the amsterdam police or the london police uh, the system is very efficient the surveillance system is very good the infrastructure is very good the equipment is good the equipment and also the facility is so good that it makes them committed to their job so if we take examples of good policing it is also important that we give them enough protective gears enough equipment enough infrastructure so that it can be a corrupt free system cyber security challenges are also there interception of messages or a message could be a lie or a fake so it becomes uh, redundant if the police is coming into force or taking action then uh, you know what happens it's a becoming a waste of time for the police and the whole system is a challenge cyber security challenges are also there whether the information gathered is not fake has to be identified because there are a lot of hackers also a cause of concern as far as cyber security is concerned there is also political pressure interference in investigations you can see in most of the cases there is always a challenge of uh, political pressure and interference uh, investigation that uh, the truth might not come out at all there is also lack of mental health support we see of late that many police system they are having a lot of issues as far as mental health is concerned so that's a big concern because it is an important concern because these police men are not having most conducive environment or if you take police women do not have the most conducive environment because they have to balance work as well as home so the pressure is always high and there is always a night duty and this duty conscious policemen are put under tremendous pressure and stress either because of not enough of remuneration or compensation or lack of infrastructure or political pressure and threats from the local community making it very difficult and challenging for policing in cities police and urbanization so let's come to the important aspect of how to relate police and urbanization police helps in reducing congestion and also traffic management they also strike control and political demonstrations are uh, completely under the purview of the police in the city so it is important that they keep a strict vigilance for uh, preventing strikes or even if there is a strike it has to be very peaceful we saw in the uh, jalikata revolt time when there was a strike going on uh, it was quite peaceful and uh, we also saw how the police played a very uh, friendly role uh, only thing it ended in a bad taste because people who were i would say some of the hooligans who were involved at the end 
So it was quite challenging to see how Jalikata revolt, which was uh, very uh, peaceful in order to protect the culture of the state, uh, went on to become very sour is because of the struggles and also because of hooliganisms uh, of few uh, notorious men. Now also the one of the problems which uh, the police in the city is facing is smuggling and organized crimes. You know that uh, smuggling has become part and parcel in most of the city and police uh, it is a challenge to see that these crimes are reduced. So smuggling and organized crimes is a mafia or oriented or uh, it is gangism in different uh, streets which is a real struggle to maintain law and order. So efficient surveillance system and modern policing is required so that it is uh, essential to see that the crime rate is reduced. But at the same time it is also essential to see that the uh, people are safe. So we see that they have increased the surveillance system. Now if you see policing has also the human values touch. Something called values and ethics has prompted them to actually promote the idea of human rights. Now if you see the police in modern day are not looked at as uh, some monsters but they are treated as the protectors of the society. And that's why I had to mention that the police is an unsung hero which actually does uh, uh, the protection of every civilian in that city. And we are able to sleep well is because of some police being very sincere in their job. We also see that terrorism and extremism has been handled very capably by the police in the uh, cities especially. If you see terrorism and extremism has been persisting in most of the cities and uh, because of uh, strict vigilance they are not able to penetrate into the city easily. And also preparedness and disaster management is one and uh, important aspect as far as the police is concerned. Preparedness and disaster management is part and parcel of police in India. Why do we say that is because of natural disasters or if we talk about the previous point like the terrorism and extremism also preparedness is an important aspect. Although there are many laws which are protecting the interest of the people and also to reduce crime rates they have been uh, note it has been noticed that in cities there are some illegal practices and in order to uh, curb that police has to be vigilant 24 7 and it is found that preparedness and recovery is important along with mitigation and uh, also it is important to have a follow up so that complete training is given to the police department so that they can become more efficient. Neighborhood revitalization and homelessness. This is an ongoing issue in most of the cities right now because either people don't have money because of unemployment or they are destitute thrown out of the house. So it is also important to have the human aspects as far as the police is concerned. So it is important that they are sent to the right place and they are safe. If you take uh, women in general, women destitutes need to be sent to destitute centers or if they have mental illness then to be sent to the right place so that proper treatment is given. So you see that the police in India is not only really doing the role of protecting the citizens from any crimes but also the human aspects. Now environmental crimes and sustainability is also part and parcel. So police is not diversified and juvenile uh, delinquency and justice is something which uh, has been looked into by the police. Community outreach, economic development, minimizing social conflict, digitalization is all part and parcel of police in urbanization in India. And I think uh, it is right and justified why we say that police 
in city are unsung heroes of the society and next time we see a police we need to thank him for protecting us and keeping india safe thank you very much